thank you dr uh, shubhrat and dr ajay dr mayur for inviting me uh, for this hormone india conference and i have been listening to various presentations excellent uh, topics have been selected and excellent presentations so uh, i will start uh, so is my screen visible now yes yeah yeah, yeah. perfect okay. so i will be talking about follow up of uh, differentiated thyroid cancer so uh, uh, as everyone says that thyroid cancer is one of the uh, best cancers uh with highest cure rate and hence it is one of the best cancers to have but i think uh, the patients and their care givers might differ with that because of uh, long follow ups and associated with these cancers so the incidence of thyroid cancer continues to rise worldwide and it is basically because of increase in the diagnostic modalities and overall treatment outcome is excellent 10 year overall survival is above 90% however what we have to remember is that recurrence rate is also very high uh, 23 to 30% so what should be the goal of our follow up so goal of our follow up is accurately uh, survey sur do the surveillance of the patients who may have possible recurrence uh who are thought to have a uh, free they are that disease free and to determine the need for additional treatment in particular radio iodine therapy uh so uh, as we know if we can detect the recurrence early then we can prevent the uh, death of the patient so uh, disease specific uh, death rates decrease with early detection of uh, local regional recurrence so uh, this is because the most of the recurrences are amenable to treatment so the aim of follow up is early discovery and treatment of persistent or recurrent local regional disease or distant disease and follow up surveillance must involve minimal risk to the patient minimal morbidity to the patient and minimal discomfort to the patient and it must be cost effective Uh, especially for our uh, our uh, scenario in india so for this we have risk stratification of uh, patients with thyroid cancer so the most widely followed uh, 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 stratification system is ata so it divides the patient into low risk intermediate risk and high risk uh, this is after the first surgery so the low risk patients are papillary thyroid cancers which do not have any local or distant disease and all microscopic tumor has been resected there is no tumor uh, uh, tumor invasion to local regional or distant tissue uh, structure there is no vascular invasion uh, and apart from papillary thyroid cancer and any intrathyroidal encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid cancer intrathyroidal well differentiated follicular thyroid cancer with capsular invasion and minimal uh, vascular invasion less than 445 so intermediate risk involves microscopic invasion of tumor into perithyroidal soft tissue papillary thyroid cancer with a vascular invasion or clinically n1 or more than five pathological uh, lymph nodes involved and high risk Uh, involves macroscopic invasion of tumor into perithyroidal soft tissue uh, meaning gross extrathyroidal extension post operative uh, thyroglobulin suggestive of distant metastasis pathological n1 with any metastatic lymph node more than 3 cm in larger dimension so this initial risk stratification is very important to guide further treatment and to guide the uh, surveillance of the patients so this but apart from this we we have what is called as uh, drs dynamic risk stratification because these patients have excellent prognosis their stratification should evolve over time with follow up so this this is a different uh, drs a dynamic risk stratification so initial staging system is 
to guide the initial therapeutic and diagnostic follow up strategy decisions uh, but it is less accurate in predicting long term outcome initial risk estimates are refined based on new data uh, accumulated during the each follow up of the patient so uh, patients are restratified based on response to therapy so this is a uh, this is dynamic risk stratification so uh, the excellent response group consists of patients uh, who have uh, suppressed thyroglobulin less than 0.2 nanogram per ml or stimulated uh, thyroglobulin less than 1 nanogram per ml and uh, thyroglobulin antibodies are absent and neck examination on uh, imaging is uh, negative no uh, evidence of any loco regional recurrence so these patients have very less chances of recurrence intermediate or good response category has suppressed thyroglobulin level detectable but less than 1 nanogram to uh, less than 10 nanogram per ml or stimulated thyroglobulin level is in declining trend thyroglobulin antibodies are absent or declining and uh, on neck examination on imaging there might be some uh, uh, evidence of uh, disease but it is clinically insignificant then con uh, incomplete response group has uh, suppressed thyroglobulin more than 1 nanogram per ml or stimulated thyroglobulin more than 10 nanogram per ml and uh, uh, thyroglobulin antibodies in the rising trend or these patients may have uh, are imaging wise some loco regional recurrence so post operative surveillance modalities are uh, most important one are uh, thyroglobulin it is a biochemical marker and it can be done in blood it is done in blood so that is why uh, it it is a non invasive kind of test and other imaging modalities are ultrasonography ct mri then functional imaging modalities uh, which is used uh, individually on each patient's case basis so radioactive iodine scan pet scan and other scans are there so thyroglobulin roughly correlates with the amount of thyroid tissue and uh, this measurement provides important information about the presence or absence of residual recurrent or metastatic disease so undetectable is obviously considered excellent response then there, there could be minimally detectable levels uh, in uh, incomplete response group and then there is thyroglobulin trends over the time because uh, as we are progressing from total thyroidectomy to hemithyroidectomy for uh, tumors less than 4 cm where uh, this thyroglobulin trend over time becomes more important then uh, stimulated thyroglobulin has very high sensitivity and specific specificity for recurrent disease and uh, so this stimulated tg can be after stop stopping the thyroxin supplement for 30 days or it can be after uh, injecting a recombinant uh, tsh then uh, apart from estimating thyroglobulin estimation of anti thyroglobulin auto antibodies is also very important because auto tg antibodies uh, are uh, may be uh, elevated in 25% of thyroid cancer and uh, but 10% of general population as well so they may result in falsely lower serum thyroglobulin levels in in the assays so it is also important to monitor this then ultrasonography is a very sensitive investigation for the neck and but it depends on the uh, uh, it is operator dependent so uh, it is important that uh, a person recurrences occur in neck only or thyroid bed so uh, it can detect lesions as small as 2 to 3 mm and uh, then neck uh, ultrasonography along with rising serum thyroglobulin level is a telltale uh, sign that there is some recurrence then uh, uh, 
uh, there could be uh, a recurrence in thyroid bed so on ultrasonography these are the signs for uh, detecting the loco regional recurrence and uh, thyroid bed is especially very critical area because any recurrence if it happens there uh, it is difficult to treat surgically so suspicious lesions are typically characterized by ovoid shape and have are hypoecogenic may be associated with micro calcifications and cystic components then cervical lymph nodes which are suspicious for malignancy have loss of fatty hilum uh, may be round and hypoechoic with micro calcification and cystic appearance so as i said the advantages is that it can detect lesions as small as 2 to 3 mm unaffected by radio iodine avidity and no radiation exposure non invasive guided fnac is possible it it's cost effective and it is widely available this advantage is uh, operator dependent so coming to radioactive iodine scan so uh, radioactive iodine imaging therapy uh, uh, exploits the capacity of thyroid tumor cells to take up iodine which is mediated by sodium iodine uh, symporter so uh, generally preserved in thyroid cancer cells so that is that is the uh, uh, work uh, that we exploit in radioactive iodine uh, is scanning so sensitivity is approximately uh, uh, 27 to 55% but it has high specificity and it is one of the most sensitive tools for detection of thyroid remnant so usually pre treatment whole body scan is performed before doing a radioactive iodine ablation and uh, radioactive iodine scan may include iodine 131 or 123 with or without spect ct then post treatment scanning is done after the radioactive of post treatment uh, scans affect the prognosis so uh, preparation for the scan uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding are absolute contraindication and uh, uh, radioactive iodine uptake is dependent on adequate stimulation by tss which can be obtained by stopping the thyroxine supplement for one month or by recombinant tss and usually a low iodine diet is prescribed for 7 to 10 days then coming to entity what is called as tennis thyroglobulin elevation with normal iodine scan so uh, in uh, 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 10 to 15% of the patients the sodium iodide symporters are absent so uh, are uh, lacking so uh, these these patients will have a negative radioactive iodine scan but their thyroglobulin will be uh, elevated so it is important to uh, detect these patients coming to definition of cure so definition of cure for thyroid cancer is uh, defined as if there is no clinical evidence of tumor no imaging evidence of tumor by radioactive iodine imaging or no evidence of tumor on neck ultrasonography low serum thyroglobulin levels during tss separation less than 0.2 or stimulated tg less than 1 uh, ng per ml in the absence of interfering antibodies so uh, coming to other imaging modalities like ct uh, it it is prescribed based on individual patient and uh, if there are uh, thyroglobulin level is very high and ultrasonography is suggesting a loco regional recurrence or there is suspicion of distant metastasis similarly mri uh, is also uh, prescribed uh, on each case basis so uh, it it is imaging modality of choice for thyroid cancer metastasizing to bone brain and liver then uh, there is some role of uh, 18 fdg pet ct as well because it is both anatomical and functional so it is recommended in high risk dtc patient with thyroglobulin more than 10 to evaluate the post treatment response and it is a prognostic tool in metastatic disease 
So just briefly, what are the protocol for follow-up TSA suppression? So uh, TSA suppression, it is important to uh, decide which patients need a suppressive therapy and what is optimum level of uh, TSA suppression. So initial suppression is based on the initial risk stratification. Low risk thyroid cancer patients uh, can be kept in low normal range of TSA 0.5 to 1. Intermediate risk group patients definitely need TSA suppression from 0.1 to 0.5 and high risk patients should be kept, uh, their TSA should be kept below 0.1. Then uh, during follow-up, this has to be uh, modified as per the response at per the DRS. So uh, the uh, American uh, thyroid uh, system, because there are harms associated with uh, TSA suppression. in detail. Uh, so uh, this was the uh, basic uh, modality, basic protocol for follow-up of a differentiated thyroid cancer. So thank you.